Before you say anything, no, I did not just get this for the thumbnail. As soon as I saw this pop up in one of the episodes, I was like, I need to have this in my life. So, uh, thank you, Hawkeye, for making me buy a custom Thanos Was Right uh, mug just to have up on display. In fact, here, I'll... There. There we go. Hey guys, James MC Reviews here. Welcome to another TV log. And today we're going to be talking about Hawkeye. This is the latest Marvel Disney Plus show to be released this year, and it centers around Clint Barton, who is just trying to spend Christmas with his family. He's just finished saving the universe, and he just wants to put all this Ronin shit behind him. He wants to uh, celebrate the holidays with his family, but he gets roped into this large plot by a bunch of different villains when uh, the Ronin sort of persona comes back into play. Um, and now he kind of has to clear his name. He has to take this, uh, this young girl, Kate Bishop, under his wing, who kind of becomes his partner by the end of it. He has to fight off all these gangs and criminals that are after him for whatever reason. And above all else, he just needs to make it home in time for Christmas. So if I'm being honest, I kind of forgot that this show was coming out. Like, I had to remind myself, oh shit, the first two episodes dropped on this day and I should probably watch them. Because not only has kind of the Marvel fatigue been setting, setting in this year, I mean, we've had so many shows and so many movies that have come out but it's just, I don't know, like, as much as I love Hawkeye, it's really kind of tough to get excited for a whole series based on him. Nevertheless, I was still going to watch it just to see what they did. I'd I wanted to see how they introduced Kate Bishop. I wanted to see what other stuff they had up their sleeve for this series. And admittedly, when the story first starts out, it was pretty slow. Like, it was a lot of exposition. It was a lot of character introduction, which is fine. Um... And I think the way they introduced Kate Bishop was really cool of how they show her. She is living in New York uh, during the initial Tatari attack uh, and her dad gets murdered. But then she sees uh, Hawkeye fighting off aliens and that's what sort of inspires her to take up archery and, you know, try to be a hero, essentially. I thought that was really cool. But then it's just sort of introducing all these like plot threads and you see the Ronin suit come back into play as a major plot line. You get the introduction of uh, this girl Echo who is a uh, deaf character who is kind of leading this like mafia because she wants to hunt down the Ronin because the Ronin killed her father. And it's just those first two episodes like they have their moments but they are really really slow and kind of boring. But the episodes do start to pick up uh, from three onward. Um, I really like uh, Clint and Kate's dynamic. I think uh, Haley Steinfeld does a really good job as Kate Bishop. She isn't as annoying as I thought she was going to be. She does hold her own in a lot of uh, the fights that she has. She makes a lot of like dumb decisions, admittedly, but they are for noble reasons. She just really looks up to Clint and wants to do right by him. She wants to help out her mom because she believes that she's in danger. You know, she doesn't feel like a completely flawless character like a lot of the other like MCU heroines that they've been introducing who are just, you know, to, to quote Critical Drinker, strong female characters. She makes mistakes and she like, d she does mess a lot of things up, but in the end she does uh, ultimately learn from her mistakes and she does uh, come into her own and become a bit of a badass. I also really love the development with Clint in this series. Um, we start to see his disability form, we see his hearing start to go. Um, we have that great scene where he's, uh, he, his hearing aids are broken and he is on the phone with his son but he can't hear him so Kate has to like write out what he's saying but Clint can't hear what he's saying. But stuff like that is really great. And just seeing how he's dealt with the past like few years it, with Natasha's absence and a whole bunch of people's blood on his hands after going really crazy and becoming Ronin. Uh, is pretty cool to see, and I, I like that, you know, he is so kind of cold to Kate at first, um, because, you know, he doesn't want the same thing that happened to Natasha to happen to her, but over time they form a really strong friendship and a partnership, and, um, I really love their dynamic, and I look forward to seeing, uh, the two of them team up in another 
movie or series or something. I also really liked the action in this series. Like, I imagine most people would think it's hard to make a guy who shoots arrows look cool, but there are, are a lot of, on top of a lot of really cool hand-to-hand -hand scenes with, you know, these mafia guys and with Echo and a bunch of other, like, villains who, uh, or enemies who show up, um, there's a lot of cool archery scenes. Uh, they make really good use of trick arrows. Uh, some of them are pretty cartoonish, to be fair, but, you know, that that's part of the fun of it. I, I really like uh, how they utilize those. I thought visually, just seeing Christmas in New York was absolutely amazing, and, like, it, it's just so pretty seeing the lights and everything. Like, this is a Christmas show. Like, you, could, you can put this on every year, uh, whether you're a Marvel fan or not, and just marvel at, you know, the scenery and the lights and, you know, the everyone out in the streets and the snow and everything like that. It's, it's really cool. And, you know, the whole underlying thing of gotta be home for Christmas to see the family, you know, is, uh, is a nice touch. Now, the show does have quite a few problems. Uh, on top of it having a really slow start, it does balance a lot of plot threads. Like, you know, we start off with just these mafia guys who are after Ronin. Then Echo gets brought into the fray, and then Echo's boyfriend is kind of kind of gets a bigger role. And then we see Yelena, um, Natasha's sister from Black Widow, show up because she's been assigned to kill Clint because uh, she thinks that he murdered her sister. And then, you know, we see. All, meanwhile, Kate is trying to figure out what's going on with her mom's new boyfriend, Jack, because he, she believes that he murdered this, like, rich business guy for some reason. And then, randomly out of nowhere, the big boss behind all of it is Kingpin, Vincent D'Onofrio from the Daredevil Netflix series, who shows up for one episode and then supposedly gets shot. Um, that is a lot. Like, a lot of plot elements and characters being introduced. And I mean, granted, D'Onofrio's Kingpin did have a whole Netflix series beforehand, but still, like, his reintroduction is so quick and he gets taken out of the picture just as quick that it's like, what was even the point of that? And there's so many things, like, going on that I know are just set up for other series or movies or whatever, but I feel like you could have trimmed some of these down. Like, you had to put Yelena in there at the very least because, you know, she uh, that was set up at the end of Black Widow. Um, but I think the whole subplot with Echo could have been... I don't, I don't know. I, you could have maybe kept that as, like, either a really, really super side thing or save that for the end for like a season two or something. Cause I know Echo is also getting her own show or something. It's just a lot of these things I really didn't find interesting and they were taking away from a lot of the like, a lot of the action and a lot of the like, you know, nicer character moments that I just figured you could have cut them and missed nothing. Also, I really wish that Hawkeye's family got uh, more to do. Like I really love those characters. I love Linda Cardellini um, and she is sort of, you know, utilized a bit and that she helps in this investigation of this Rolex or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember what that was, but like they, they're they just kind of there. Uh, and I really wish that they had a larger role because, you know, I love those characters and I love, you know, that, that sort of human connection with Hawkeye as his family. And I'd love to see them get more involved. And apparently, uh, Hawkeye's wife is like a larger character in the comics. So maybe they're setting that up at some point, but overall, this series was just kind of all right. Like I, it wasn't awful. Like it wasn't like the weakest. I think the weakest is still Falcon and Winter Soldier, but it is definitely second place. I feel like they have done a lot more interesting uh, stuff with the previous series, the WandaVision and Loki and What If. This was just kind of a fun, you know, a fun but forgettable holiday romp uh, with Hawkeye that, uh, you know, also introduces a bunch of other stuff for things going forward. My one major takeaway from this series, though, is that I really, really want a full version of Rogers the Musical. Like, Disney, Marvel, get on that. Like, put that in the theme parks, put that on Broadway. I will be there fucking day one. But yeah, overall, uh, if I had to rate Hawkeye, I would probably give it a 
three out of five. It's very middle of the road. Nothing amazing, but nothing horrible either. But yeah, that does it for this video. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of Hawkeye. What do you think is next for Clint Barton and Kate Bishop going forward? Um, let me know all that stuff down below. Look forward to more videos coming real soon, but until then, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you can stay up to date on when I'm posting. Follow me on all my social media, subscribe to my main channel. Everything you need to know will be in the description. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you later. Save the sea.